Fat Mike from the legendary punk band NoFX. So nice to have you here. Hello. Good morning to where am I? Guten Morgen. <laughs> Guten Morgen. It's nice to have you. <laughs> where are you at the moment? I'm at my house in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. And how much time is it there? It's 10. 10. 10 a.m. So right in the morning after all. <laughs> yeah. I've been up for 45 minutes. Oh, wow. So thank you so much for taking your time. <laughs> All right. And I'm right on time. Yes, yes. Getting the punk in punctual. Yeah, yeah. But you know, we Germans very like punctuality. <laughs> Me too. Me too. You uh, told us that you spent one whole night uh, watching other bands on YouTube covering your song Linoleum from yeah. the record Punk and Drop Like, which I love. And what was that? Uh, feeling so you write you started right to uh, write a new version of linoleum why you did that uh well one thing i i always try to do is to write songs that i've never written before that no one's written before that are just different and new i mean it's it's i, I i'm not looking to put out music that people have heard before or write lyrics that people have heard before why mm -hmm. You know, I want lyrics and chord progressions and melodies that kind of surprise people. Because mm -hmm. that's the only way you can keep your band relevant. If you keep playing the same song, you turn to the Ramones. <laughs> and the last time I saw the Ramones was at a 500-seat club. And, you know, you just want to hear the hits. You don't really care about the new album. What's cool about being in No Effects is that uh, people do want to hear our new albums. Mm -hmm. You know, Uh, they get pissed at us when we just play old songs. Anyway, so Linoleum, I just thought of the idea after I saw these songs. Wow, so many people have covered this song. If I change it and I change the chord progression and melody, it's going to fuck with people's head. <laughs> it's really going to, because it is. The first time you hear that song and it goes to the fast part and then I go to an A instead of a C sharp, your brain is like explodes, yeah. not explodes, but it's a <laughs> surprise. <laughs> Having different lyrics are, is, is a little bit surprising, but changing mm -hmm. chord and melody. Mm -hmm. And then after you hear the new song, maybe three or four times and you go to the original one and then that one sounds wrong. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Can't wait to hear it live. And I like say, yeah, linoleum. No, wait. Uh, yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's going to be great. So, yeah, let's talk about your upcoming record. It's a single album released on uh, February 26th. Um, I had the chance to listen to it, and I realized that it's a very emotional uh, record, almost a sad record. Yeah, it's, it's, it's very sad, at least half of it. Uh, and you're asking, why is it so sad? Yes. <laughs> uh, well, I was writing this record after getting divorced, mm -hmm. and it was a really bad divorce for me. I was I was uh, living by myself in San Francisco, and you know San Francisco got really expensive, so most of my friends just moved away. You know, my band Eric Melvin used to live four blocks from me. He moved away, and then my wife moved out. And I'm just living by myself. And it was the first time in my life that I had depression mm -hmm. where I just, I didn't feel like getting up. And so I just was drinking and doing uh, cocaine every day, not every day, three or four days a week, which is still mm -hmm. a lot. Yeah. And when I wasn't doing it, I was just watching TV in bed. But when it get to be like four in the morning, that's when I started writing. So actually, I, you know, we had 23 songs for this album. It was supposed to be a double album. And uh, actually, disc two was, was lighthearted and, and funnier. <sighs> But uh, I decided just to put out this record because I think it, uh, it's cohesive. You know, it's, it is a dark album, but it, it sounds connected. And uh, I thought I made a better album than a double album. But the thing is, I was depressed when I wrote it. And, and when I recorded it, you know, I recorded this album a year and a half ago. Uh -huh. 
uh, we've never had a record take so long to come out, but you know, Bill from the descendants recorded it and he's like, dude, are you coming? Are you wasted? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you don't get, I've never recorded a record, uh, while dr- drinking and using drugs before I'm always sober. Okay. And this record, I was just on drugs. Mm-hmm. So it has a different feel in the writing and in, uh, and I think in the recording too. Yeah. But well, uh, there's one line in the song Birmingham. Um, when I'm with uh, no FX or having bondage sex, uh, I seem to function when I'm alone. It's just self-destruction. But you yeah. just said, uh, also in the studio, you were feeling bad, pretty bad. Well, it was just, uh, you know, when you work with Bill, mm-hmm. uh, he likes to record, you know, seven days a week, 12 hours a day, uh, which isn't how I like to record. Mm-hmm. So you're, and you know, and I write all the songs and record most of the parts and I have to be there for the drums. So I have to be there 12 hours a day mm-hmm. and it, it's not fun. I mean, it's, it turns into work. So yeah, I would start drinking and, and doing drugs uh, just to keep focused Because, you know, now I have a recording studio at my house in L.A. And uh, now I'll, I'll work for like three or four hours a day. Okay. so And yeah. which is fun, which is like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to record a song today. It's not under this pressure. And I don't know why I put myself under that pressure. What's well, because Bill doesn't live here. So he, he comes out for three weeks. He wants to get it done. <laughs> and we didn't get it done. You know, when he heard it was a double album, he's like, we're not going to finish. I go, oh, well, you know, we'll see. And it took me, you know, six months to finish the album. Oh, wow. Yeah, and, and what made you decide uh, to put it out now? Was it like, well, first the effort was four years ago, or did you feel like now it was the right time to uh, release that album? Well, actually, we would put it off because we did the Frank Turner split record. Yeah. And, and while we were still finishing, I mean, this album was supposed to come out six months ago, mm-hmm. single album. Yeah. And then Frank Turner called, he goes, Hey, we're, we're almost done in, with our songs. And I was like, Oh shit. <laughs> uh, we haven't even started. So I called the band. I go, we have to record Frank Turner songs. And then we decided that the Frank Turner split would be a funner record during COVID. Like you would cheer people up. Mm-hmm. So we put that one out first. And, you know, that's a super fun record. And I thought it, it was really it was good timing, you know, mm-hmm. for us. Like, oh, this sounds like old no effects. It's fun. Before this record came out. But, uh, yeah, th- this record has been done for over a year. Wow. And, and this, the funny part is, you know, we waited four years between First Ditch Effort and this one. But we're already recording. We started last week recording a new album because uh, – I've been sober for, I don't know, three months, something like that. Oh, well, cool. And I've, uh, I just uh, wrote my 40th song. So, because, you know, what do you do during COVID? Yeah. You got to do shit. And I just turned to writing. And uh, being clear headed, it's just really helped me write songs. So we're already recording a new album, which is going to come out this year in November. Oh, so two records in one year. Wow. And it's not the 13 songs that didn't go on uh, mm-hmm. the double album. These are new songs. New songs. And I read that you're planning to do a documentary about uh, the recording process. Is that true? What we were thinking of doing is uh, streaming us in the studio. Okay. So just uh, like a live stream all the way. <laughs> yeah. Like just, uh, you know, you paid $10 a month and you get to, Be, check us out in the studio. <laughs> I don't know. Do you, you think that's a good idea? I I might watch it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, totally. And right, I'm well, kind of excited to see the sober mic uh, working in the studio since I often saw uh, the drunk mic uh, rocking the stage. Well, everybody sees the drunk mic rocking yeah, the stage. Sure. <laughs> and, you know, I feel like uh, I actually. Uh, I did a summer tour about four years ago where I, all throughout Europe and where I was sober. Mm-hmm. And, you know, 
everyone thought I played better, but I didn't have as much fun. So, <laughs> you know, what do you do? It's a trade-off. Yeah, it's kind of hard. Uh, but do you think Drunk Mike will return to stage or do you want to keep it going? Uh, I, I'm going to be sober for a year. I mm -hmm. plan on. Uh, we'll see. I might be sober forever. And, you know, it, it maybe, you know, I've also done tours where I had, you know, two or three drinks before I went on stage, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, almost sober. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, which is yeah, almost over. <laughs> <laughs> so um, today's bands uh, usually release single after single and saying, yeah, there's something new coming up. Just uh, stay tuned. And then after, I don't know, like the fifth or the sixth single, they said, hey, we put out an album. Novix did, uh, did it the other way, I think. You released Linoleum, and then you said, hey, there's our new record coming up. Is it like the Novix way to do things? Or well, we usually, do one, or two we usually yeah. do one or two singles, but what we did this time is it's, it's going to disappoint people. Uh, we put out uh, actually six songs of the album out of 10 out already because when COVID is going on, uh, we just decided to start making music videos. Yeah. You know, just to put it out, just to like uh, be supportive of people staying at home. So we made a video for uh, Doors and Fours and for I Love You More Than I Hate Me. Yeah. And then uh, Lanuli and Fuck Euphemism and, uh, and, And Birmingham was released on seven inch, you know, mm -hmm. a different version. And and Fish in a Gun Barrel was on a, a seven inch. So we re released most of these songs, different versions. But ah, okay, yeah, all right. So, uh, uh, do you think a uh, band like North X could be as successful as you are today, with doing your own stuff and yeah, like I said, doing it the North X way? Well, we had no choice. Like uh, in the 90s when everyone was signing to major labels and we just decided it took a little while for me to get clear in my head what I wanted. And what I wanted was happiness. And I asked the band, you know, it was during uh, right when Punk and Drubbuck came out and we were we had a lot of success. Mm -hmm. You know, we all had money in the bank and we're happy. And I go, we're happy. Let's not fuck with happiness because you can't really have more happiness. You can just be happy or not happy. Mm -hmm. And we were happy. And I thought that going to a major would make us unhappy. It had the possibility of making us unhappy because now you're writing songs, thinking about record sales and you're mm -hmm. thinking about what people are going to like. And uh, I don't like writing what people like, you know, I, I like writing what I think people, what I want people to hear. Mm -hmm. And I like that part of punk rock is writing something that's offensive to society. Yeah. And, uh, and like this record, you know, in fuck euphemism, I say things that people are confused by, yeah. you know, and there's a line where I say, uh, and I did a line off Scarlett's hundred thousand dollar cunt. Yeah. I did a line off a trans, uh, woman's man-made <laughs> cunt. That makes people uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but, but but would you? Yeah, it's difficult to do that too because usually you'd put cocaine behind the clitoral hood, and it stays <laughs> up there, and you can do it. But this one is just smooth, like a Volkswagen hood, you know, like a Beetle, and uh, <laughs> it doesn't stay there; it just kind of slid right down. So, so. you got to be a pro there. <laughs> yeah, and you know, I had no, I had no experience. <laughs> <laughs> right, but but would you uh, you own your own label, uh, Fat Rack, and would you sign a band that would sing such lyrics? Uh, that like me? Yeah, well, sure. yeah. I mean, I've signed bands with uh, with uh, very uh, anti. I mean, very offensive lyrics. Mm -hmm. uh, it's harder now, kind of because. Uh, you can get canceled by society uh, mm -hmm. if you're too offensive. Like you can't put out uh, lyrics like Gigi Allen or the dicks mm. anymore. Yeah, <laughs> you could, but you know, there's women at fat records, you know, yeah. there's, three, there's three women out of seven people 
of four, four and eight. And uh, they don't want to hear certain songs that are, you know, sexist mm -hmm. and just punk, you know, like the mentors or something. So I respect that. Now you, you got to put out, you got to think about the product you're putting out and what it, it, uh, people can hear it wrong or hear it right or whatever. Mm -hmm. Being an artist, you have to be more responsible these days. So that's a juggling act for me. Do you think it was better then, like uh, when being a punk was uh, more likely to not give a fuck about what I sing? Or would you, you say it's better we today? Didn't uh, yeah. We didn't give a fuck because no one was listening. Uh -huh. You know, uh, <laughs> you know, if you put out a record, maybe 5,000 people would hear it, not 500,000 people. Yeah, right. <laughs> So, so it's uh, another you get it. Mm. Yeah. Uh, and, and punk rock was, we were pushing boundaries. Mm. You know, Sid Vicious wore a swastika t-shirt. You know, it's like, holy yeah. shit. You yeah. can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Gigi Allen, you know. Yes. In fact, just yesterday I watched Gigi Allen in San Francisco and someone told me, you know, you're in that video. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm in the video. <laughs> so I'm standing next to Jello Biafra, you know, watching... Ah, nice company. You know, <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, he was, he was uh, shitting on stage and, you know, sucking yeah. it up, spitting it yes. into the crowd. Uh, <laughs> yeah, those days weren't better. Mm. They were, uh, it was, but we, you know, everyone was like, oh, Gigi Allen, you, you went to see Gigi? Yeah, I went to see Gigi. Now, no way. <laughs> it, it wouldn't happen now. And uh, I wouldn't go anymore either. <laughs> <laughs> I was 19 when I went. But I think punk rock, I have thought this for the past 20 years, it's funner now. It's better. You know, it's funner. Uh, uh, like bands, if you think of one of the greatest punk records, you know, ever, a lot of them were in the 90s. Yes. And, and it's only 94. <laughs> you know, with Rancid and Bad Religion. Uh, there's some great records. Mm. And that's what I would say. Like my favorite records in punk rock are, you know, Bad Religion and Rancid. And uh, so, no, I think punk rock got better. Uh, and that now the whole world listens. That's even better because mm -hmm. it might not be as fun. It's not our secret music anymore, mm. but it's clearly the best kind of music, you know, both musically and lyrically. And the people in punk rock are cooler. Yes. You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah, punk rock's pretty great. And still yeah. alive. It's I'll be better than it used to be. Yeah. It's not as dangerous. It's not as romantic. <laughs> um, do you feel like, uh, we were talking about that uh, third wave of punk rock in the 90s. Um, do you feel like an elder statesman of punk right now, because I, I mean, punk and drop like was almost 30 years ago. And now you're the one on the other side signing the bands and say like, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I am sure. Mm -hmm. I, I think I'm a tastemaker in punk rock. Uh, and I think I really fly the punk flag because the bands I sign, you know, like bad cop, bad cop, Mm -hmm. uh, Bomb Pops and Days and Days, uh, Get Dead. Those are all new bands that are important and and breaking uh, molds. Mm -hmm. You know, Bad Cop, Bad Cop. They're the first like Riot Girl band that are melodic. Yeah. You know, and 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 the, they're like Bad Religion, but girls and and their lyrics are really good. Yes. And uh, I'm so proud of them. You know, and I you know I produced that I produced them and I pushed them. And they were, you know, more pop punky. And I'm like, you, you girls are, you know, you're feminists, right? Like, yeah, well, why don't you sing like that? You know, <laughs> why don't you, si why don't you uh, sing more important lyrics? And I really pushed them in that mm -hmm. direction because they felt they were, they were feminists and they were activists, but they just weren't singing that way. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, I think I'm, uh, I try to keep punk rock alive with my label and my band. And, you know, especially with no effects. I sing songs that people are like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, pretty <Okay>. much. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
so um we got covid going on and like um yeah i'm getting a little bit of sentimental here by hearing of the, all those great bands uh that can't play live at the moment um but i heard that you're a pretty busy right now or you mentioned already that you're writing tons of new material from north x you're going to the studio but uh there are also other projects um like the punk museum you were talking about to the ox fan sign um what's that all about does punk belong into a museum <laughs> uh punk does not belong in a museum but it does belong in the punk rock museum you know <laughs> uh I bought a building in Las Vegas in an old antique store, but it's, it's big. It's 12,000 square feet. And uh, we're building a museum that is worthy of punk rock. You know, you, you buy a ticket for $25, you're going to get a free beer as you walk mm -hmm. in. Uh, every room is going to be based on years. Like there'll be a, you know, 1986 room. Every, the wall is going to be covered with flyers from 1986. And then there'll be record labels. And when you go, in 90 in 81 will be the epitaph you know room with from 80, 81 and they'll, every room is going to have a record player that you put on your own records like there'll be a stack of records of epitaph records and you get to you get to play them mm -hmm. so uh and there's a you know a beer garden outside and barbecue and, and on weekends at nights we're going to show free punk movies on the side of the building you know it's going to be a punk museum Sounds like yeah. a little paradise for me. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I just talked to Jerry only from the misfits two days ago. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he was with Sid vicious right before he died and he, we're getting Sid vicious boots, his boots. We're getting his creepers. Wow. We're getting some misfits guitars. You know, it's like, I keep calling people and everyone's so excited, you know, and, you know, Jerry only, he's like, I'm going to build a display case. I'm going to drive it out. He's like so excited to, to go there. <laughs> Everybody's become a little child. Like, yeah, that rock music. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because, you know, our lifestyle deserves to be in a museum. And yeah, I know what you mean by museum, but no, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, we're going to be mm -hmm. the exact opposite of that. You know, you don't mm -hmm. need to be inducted. Yeah. It, it's Or just becoming like a tourist attraction. I don't know, but. Well, yeah, it, it might be, but, you know, I got handwritten lyrics from Necros, you know, from Ohio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Shit like that. So, so punk rockers will be like, whoa, cool. Yeah. I got Jerry A's uh, leather uh, jockstrap, you know, from Poison Idea. <laughs> so, and it's, and it's five decades of punk too. It's not 70s, mm -hmm. 80s, 90s. It's inclusive. Like all the stuff. Wow, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> pretty awesome to me. I think you might have What's, heard that so question funny. a lot. It brings, it brings me joy every day. Yeah. You know, working on it. Speaking of working on it, um, you wrote your own musical. Yeah, Home Street Home. Yes. Can you explain how to make a musical punk rock? Because we at Rock Antenna, we are like the only acceptable musical is a Rocky Horror Picture Show. And uh, no, Hedwig. Hedwig and the Angry Inch is also acceptable. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> I'm not really into the musical scene. so I'm, I'm uh, not either. But, uh, okay. you know, I heard Rocky Horror when I was eight years old. Uh -huh. And it was Anywhere. my first uh, introduction to music, really. And, you know, uh, it shaped my life. Mm -hmm. It was punk rock before punk rock. Yeah. So <laughs> Frank and Furta. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so uh, writing a musical has always been in me. I just never really, you know, I worked on it for years. And then after Gre uh, I saw Hedwig and the Angry Inch, I go, I'm going to do this for real. Mm -hmm. I still didn't. And then Green Day did American Idiot. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, now I'm really going to do this because that, that, that's, you know, it's not a musical. It's songs on stage. Yeah. I wanted to, you know tell the story of street punks of kids on the street. Uh, and I spent 10 years working on it, which is a really long time, mm. not just the songs, but the script. And we opened a few times. And uh, what's so heartbreaking to me is we finally got a, you know, a four month run in LA 
It was supposed to open last July. And uh, well, we couldn't open. Mm. And we had the cast and, and the script was great. And finally, the script was done. Because mm. we did a version in 2014, which you can see on the internet. But yeah. that was just, you know, it's, it's a much different play now. That was the first crack at it. Okay. You know, you do that. You you make musicals. And you keep changing and changing until you get to Broadway. Mm-hmm. And so we we spent another five years after that working on it because we had a big producer. Yeah. So now uh, we're waiting again. But now I've actually written it as a TV series, and uh, we just started shopping it to net to networks.Ay, but there are no no news about it, or did you well, get we can't do anything. You know, mm-hmm. what can you do? Mm-hmm. It's ready to go, and uh, there's at least two big producers that are uh, trying to get it. Okay, okay. So, yeah, good luck on on that. I'm pretty there's excited record, for it. The, the record, the first record, Volume One, is available. You know, on yeah, Spotify and whatever you can buy. It. Yeah, and my daughter sings on it, and she 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 sang on it when she was 14. She's really she's very good, and and she is. Uh, Is she on the new record actually? And um, yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, <laughs> okay, in Linoleum. Uh, what the fuck, Linoleum? Yeah, sure. <laughs> she didn't know she was in it. I just—that's from a video I took of her. You know, ah. we, were, we were shopping. She's like, "Oh, Dad!" I'm like, "Oh, I'm putting that." <laughs> <laughs> so you had a good laugh, and I really have a problem that she knows that you drink pee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, then. Another uh, difficult question for nobody knows how it's going on with COVID. Uh, when will we have the chance to see NoFX in Germany again? Um, you had to cancel the Punk and Droplet shows last year, um, which was pretty sad because I already had my tickets. Um, They're still good. I mean, <laughs> we're planning on coming in September. In September. Yeah, I read that you're, you'll be at uh, Punk Rock Bowling in Las Vegas. So you think that uh, in September this year... Uh, it's going to happen again? Uh, no, I actually, I don't. Mm. Uh, but, <laughs> we're, but we're planning on it. Yeah. You know, if, if the vaccine works and, uh, uh, you know, and the number of deaths go down 90% to 10%, I think it's cool. Uh, but, you know, who knows? There's that variant, there's all kinds of shit. So mm. my plan is to just record as much as I can now because even September is six months away. No. So, and I've got songs, so, you know, I'm staying busy and, you know, I live in a, in a pretty big house and with a studio. So, and I've, I have people over, we just, we're, we're very safe. Oh, yeah. And you got enough projects to, to, uh, to be busy. All the time. I also bought, uh, I bought 50 testing kits, you know, so. T- testing kits? Yeah, for testing for COVID kits. Ah, okay. So you're gathering. So whenever no effects gets together, I make everyone take a test. Ah, all right. Yeah. So, so you stay safe all the time. Yeah, and I, the the other guys that are doing okay. Um, I don't know because like El Jefe and Smelly there. El Jefe um, is is uh, he just got cast on a TV show? Wow, which TV show? <laughs> I can't say yet. Ah, you can't. Okay, big surprise, big surprise. <laughs> cool. <laughs> okay, okay, we'll be watching that. <laughs> he's got a. He's got a name. His name is Smokey. Smokey. All right. <laughs> right. Can't wait to see it. And yeah, All right. Smokey, He's got. He's got four kids. So I don't know how crazy his life is. <laughs> I don't want to be there. <laughs> Who the fuck has four kids? Whew. I don't know. Well, I don't. <laughs> Yeah. One, one's how you do it. <laughs> Chinese way. <laughs> all right, all right. Trying to pat my way. Good. <laughs> so, Mike, thank you so much for taking your time for joining us. Um, I hope to see you live in Germany soon, or maybe yeah. I go to Vegas. When when will it open the museum? We're going to open with Punk Rock Bowling because you know the Stern Brothers from Punk Rock Bowling are. Oh wow! So it's all also partners. planned this year. Yeah. Wow. But Vegas is, I, I, you know, I go to Vegas all the time now huh? and Vegas is open. I mean, the casinos are all open. Uh-huh. Uh, 
they just they have plastic walls, you know, between cart and the blackjack table, there's, there's partitions and they wipe everything constantly. Mm. You have to wear a mask and uh, the disease is not spreading there. Okay. But restaurants are even open there. It's just, you're only allowed 25% capacity mm. and they're not, they're not fucking around there. They clean everything. Yeah. And yeah. they have good uh, filtration systems. Mm. Yeah, that's kind of the point. Their, their hospitals are not full there. Uh, yeah, but, but the places can go because in Germany at the moment, everything is locked down. Like restaurants are closed only for takeaway. Um, the clubs outdoor, are closed. outdoor dining, I don't understand. Outdoor dining should be available. Yeah. I mean, and yeah, well, know, it's pretty heard. fucking cold at the moment. <laughs> oh, right. Right. Yeah. I'm in LA. <laughs> yeah, fine. <laughs> it was 70 degrees here yesterday. Yeah, I did not Fahrenheit. <laughs> Celsius, no. Celsius. Uh, okay. No, I, I can it, was like, it was like 28 here or something like that. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Can't wait for summer. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. Well, thanks for having me. I hope we get the chance to meet each other in person, at least at the Punk and Droplet show in Munich. Yeah. Say hi. Yeah, I will. So, right. Cheers. Cheers. Thank you. Cheers. <laughs>